Alrighty, so tell me a little bit about the repossession of James Edward Poe. Am I saying that right? Poe? Pew, actually. Pew. But it's interesting, people say it a lot of different ways. <laughs> um, we kind of actually kept that in the play. Um, there is some indication of how it's supposed to be said, but different, uh, different characters say it different ways. Well, um, so it is, uh, of course, centered around the GMAC mass shooting that happened in uh, Bay Meadows in Jacksonville in 1990 which was the worst uh, shooting in Florida history until Pulse. And uh, so I, I wrote a story about it uh, for my, uh, my website, which is jackpsychogeo.com, uh, right after Parkland happened. Uh, and I got a lot of response, and I got responses from you know people who were there, uh, from survivors, from uh, family members, from first responders. And so I quickly you know thought, I want to do more than just this this one story. Uh, I started meeting with with people, and it became clear that their stories and their words were, uh, you know, more powerful than you know any way that I could retell it. So I uh, I took the you know I interviewed uh, a number of people who were directly connected to the event and um, looked at how I could best kind of merge their stories into um, the overall you know, telling of a little bit, as far as anyone can understand, of what led up to it, but also you know, what happened that day and how people have dealt with it you know, in the almost 30 years since it's happened. So for those, I guess, that are unfamiliar with the tragedy, could you give me a, a ele- not an elevator pitch, it's a terrible way to show no, it, right, no, um, just the nuts and bolts of the incident. Sure, right. So, uh, this was June 18th, 1990, and it was a Monday morning, and uh, James Edward Pugh walked into an auto loan office uh, in Bay Meadows for GMAC, which stands for General Motors Acceptance Corporation and uh, he had a couple of semi-automatic weapons with him and uh, he um, started firing and uh, he, including himself, uh, killed 10 people that day but he had also shot a couple people over the weekend Uh, and so uh, it was at the time, like I said earlier, the worst mass shooting in, in Florida history and this was also a time period before um it was, it was a time period when mass shootings were still really kind of considered freak occurrences. Like, wow, can you believe this thing happened? Surely this is never going to happen again. Unfortunately, the answers are complicated, you know. So it's easy to say, well, this guy, can you believe this guy? He, he did all this just because his car was repossessed. Um, when, uh, you know, in fact, there are lots of factors involved and, uh, and human beings are, are complicated. And, and you can't just pin it down on one simple thing. Well said. Uh, how, so how did you get involved in this? And if you want to introduce yourself for our viewers and maybe what your role is here at FSCJ. Yeah, I'm Tim McCullough. I'm a professor of theater here at the college. And uh, Tim and I direct, uh, are collaborated on a play two years ago um, dealing with uh, another kind of dark chapter in Jacksonville history. So I told him next time we'll do something more uplifting maybe um, in the Jacksonville history. <laughs> Um, and uh, so we had a wonderful collaboration two years ago and when he approached me with this because of the unfortunately topical nature of the subject matter and uh, what's happening in this country and around the world I thought it would be a really interesting thing for the students to experience and for the community to, to experience and uh, and work with a living breathing playwright so. have you received any backlash for the production it's obviously very controversial in the in the way that you said in this day and age right um, what have you heard? What have your uh, reviews been? We had, um, I think, if people, I think, if people don't realize that this was dir- directly taken from the words of survivors and loved ones of the victims, they think that it's just fictionalized. That maybe they might have some questions about that. I think when they find out that it's actually giving voice to those people that were affected by it and are still suffering from it, and it's done in an honorable way, in a respectful way. Um, that I think that takes a lot of the edge off, actually, of them being threatened and or upset about this, that we're trying to sensationalize it or something like that, which we're not at all. 
um, talking about James Edward Pugh, the, the murderer. Um, he's explored a little bit in the play, but he's really not even a character. He's really a ghost. He doesn't even have any lines. He's just this presence back there behind the, the actors sometimes. So it certainly does not glorify him in any way at all. Um, I mean, and several characters talk about that. The reason he did it was just hate. to the actual incidents themselves. I mean, as far as like down to the detail or... It's more like a docudrama in the sense of it is conducted, it is a, just the series of interviews that Tim did with these people. The dialogue is really from those interviews. So they're acting most of the time like they're being interviewed okay. by reporters, by journalists, by playwrights, whoever it is. And the style of it is them talking to somebody um, and uh, they go through they relive and talk about that day and they're part mm -hmm. of that day and so you get a picture of it through them talking about it again. Wonderful. Well, let's go around the room. There we have some actors here that are actually in the production. If you guys just want to introduce yourself and maybe why you got, wanted to get involved in something like this. Um, well, I'm Autumn Franks. I'm playing one of the um, daughters of one of the survivors actually, who thankfully made it out alive. But one of the big things I love about this production is just in this writing style, you hear how each character is somehow connected to, like they talk about my character's mother somehow knew the mother, or knew the wife of Joe's character, and you know, you see all these connections and how much this has affected these people closely together and how far apart they are now because of this incident. Um, it's definitely opened my eyes to a lot of things. Uh, one of my areas that I have to talk about is all these mass shootings and I just start listing mass shootings that have happened and I was researching how many mass shootings there were and I had to take a break because there was just so many and it was crazy to see like the ones that don't go on the news the ones that kind of skim under the radar what about you I agree 100%. <laughs> my name is uh, Kendrick Harris I play pastor Ken Jones Ken Jones yes and basically he is a radio personality uh, which was around Jacksonville during that time of the shooting and he, his kind of vision is bringing the people of Jacksonville the city together and he's a pastor so his his version is different from the next person's version his is spiritual so that's when I was doing some research I saw a lot of his quotes in some of the articles and he was rallying the city essentially after sure. the shooting so that's your role and how did you want that role? I mean, did you try for that specific role? I wanted any role. Oh, well, <laughs> at least you're honest, yeah. Because I know in class, and, and what was English too, we always talked about, like, it was, the books that we were reading were pretty dark, so, about this play, I was like, oh, yeah. Oh, I've seen his website. Okay. <laughs> he definitely wrote this play, uh, you can tell, but the play is, like Autumn was saying, it brings light to the people, everybody around, everybody but the shooter, you know what I mean? Um, and that's pretty much... I, I enjoy it because it's just, it's realistic, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Because it happens every other day, it seems like, so. Thank you. Our, la, last question for you. Are there any, I guess, characteristics that you identify with, uh, with the character that you're playing? Some key characteristics that you're like, man, like, that really resonates with me personally. Um, well, my dad's a pastor. So <laughs> well, there, there you go. go. Yeah, <laughs> that'll do it. <laughs> Thank you very much. What's your name? I'm Joseph Mercedes, and I play Robert Highfield. My character is the husband of a woman who was killed in the shooting. And his role kind of like opened my eyes to how much this really impacts these people. Like you see on the news every every other day, like, oh, shooting happened here, shooting happened here. It's like, well, I mean, it's getting closer and closer to us, but you're not very concerned about it. You know, you're going to keep living. But like this changed this man's whole life, mm -hmm. literally. Like he's... I relive the moments on stage. I'm walking around moment after moment after moment, listing everything that happened up there. I don't know how much you're allowed to talk about, but can you- All the way, every single moment up to when it ended and when I found out she was murdered and then after, you know? And just listing those moments and realizing that so many years later, he didn't forget anything, no details. He's on the ball about everything. You know, and like she was saying, everything's connected. So all these people know each other too. You know, she's talking about me, I'm talking about her. 
and we don't and we don't talk you know the these characters don't talk but we know we all know each other because it it all brings people together right you know these big events although it's horrific you know we start pointing out little things and through these characters you start finding out other reasons as to why this happened you know i start pointing out other things other characters did that pushed pew to the limit and i found that it made me also appreciate the people around me more you know because so suddenly it could all be gone yes you know so suddenly he was right around the corner when she died Mm -hmm. you know right around the corner that's crazy yeah and there are very differing viewpoints on gun rights and gun ownership within the characters within these people that are actually alive so because i think a lot of people might jump that it's an anti-gun play anti-nra and there's really a whole lot of different opinions that are actually stated by these characters about that issue including mr mm-hmm. highfield who has very strong opinions about why this is happening and and it's very different than laura's yeah. opinion about it completely diametrically opposed mm-hmm. so it's not really one side or the other but, yeah you know, well, thank you very much. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Um, what, what's your name and what role are you playing? Uh, I'm Adis Alec, and uh, I'm playing a firefighter that responded to the scene. He was a lieutenant on uh, Engine 44. Oh, and interesting. Uh, it's interesting to me uh, playing a character. Everyone has so many different perspectives of what happened. But he was a first responder, so he wasn't completely involved. Like, he didn't, you know, some of the characters know the other characters in some way, but he's more of a. Um, He's more, he's answered calls like this before, but not really like this. Okay. So, uh, he's connected to the whole story, even from an outside perspective, which I I like his input to it. It's very informative, uh, but even with it being informative, it doesn't lose the actual emotion in it. He still remembers it. He says that while he did answer a lot of calls like it, this was something completely different to him. And it's something no one that was there, whether they were a first responder or victim, would forget. Mm-hmm. Right. Interesting. Very interesting. Well, thank you guys for your time. I guess we can just kind of casually chat now. Um, what has been your favorite part in kind of putting this together? Anyone who wants to answer, more than welcome. I think it's been a lot of fun just getting up there <clears throat> and trying to come up with different little mannerisms and ways of talking to see how realistic I can get the character. So you've been doing like research into this? Yeah. Okay. We did, but we didn't want to. I mean, there's really no need for them to like, you know, try to meet with the person they're playing and copy their voices and bodies. First of all, there's a huge age difference between all of them (laughs) and the actual people, like 30 plus years. So we actually got rid of some age references that were in the original script because it's like, they're not going to believe that. Um, but uh, but yeah, they're they're coming up with their own character choices based on what's in the text. So. Okay, and that's an interesting point. So there are some people that are survivors that are still living, yeah. um, okay. and you've reached out to them about this production. How, how are their feelings? Mixed? Great? Not great? Uh, you know, uh, a couple of them have told me that they may come, but uh, you know, uh, if I were them, uh, one of them has read it. You know. Okay. If I were them, I don't know what I would feel. You know. Um, I don't think that would help. But, yeah. uh, you know, one of the things that's always <clears throat> fascinating to me about working on any kind of project like this, getting it going, is the, uh, the very kind of central human need to tell our stories. And so there have been so many people through the years that I, I will just always be grateful to for sharing, you know, something that was so intimate uh, with me and uh, and you know, the people who who talked to me for uh, you know for this this project uh, you know um, there's there's no way I can express the kind of gratitude that I, I feel for them I'm willing to, to open up you know. Um, did you have any? Uh, I'm curious. Did you have any negative reactions when you said you were going to turn it into a play? I didn't. No, no, I haven't. I haven't. Uh, and I think you know I, I can't say better what Ken said a minute ago. The play treats uh, the subject and the people involved um, respectfully and on their own terms. And uh, I think that anyone who uh, sees it uh, will, will feel that. Awesome. 
So how can people come see this play? And what time and where and how much? It is uh, April 11th through the 14th. So it's uh, the 11th through the 13th at 7.30 p.m. and the 14th at 2 p.m. Uh, here at the Wilson Center for the Arts at FSCJ South Campus in the Studio Theater. Uh, probably, it's the Studio Theater says only 110 seats, so it can fill up quickly. So in advance, if they want to get tickets, they can call 646-2222 and reserve tickets that way. And then the tickets are $10 for general public. Wonderful. Thank you guys so much. I appreciate it. And if, and if you guys have any, um, you know, want some more information, you can find it in this uh, body article with all the ticket information, the phone number, all the good stuff we talked about. Thanks so much for tuning in to this episode, and we'll catch you next time. This is Casey with First Coast News.